That's it. It's running. Yep. <sighs> You've come a long way since you started the channel. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I used to be downtown in a little shithole. All right. I'm Mark Leda, and I create the videos you see on my channel, Soft White Underbelly. Uh, there's a few things going on that I just wanted to let you guys know about. Um, but first, I just wanted to say thank you to all the people that have appeared on Soft White Underbelly in the last four years. It takes a lot of courage to share your story the way these people have, and without these people, there would be no Soft White Underbelly. So I just wanted to thank everyone that's appeared on, on my channel. I get a lot of uh, inquiries about how to submit yourself for a possible interview on Soft White Underbelly. And the way to do that is to send a paragraph or two of your story, as well as a 15, 30 second video of yourself speaking, just so I can see what you look like, how you speak, to info at softwhiteunderbelly.com. So you send the email to info at softwhiteunderbelly.com with, with, with a bit of your story and a video, and we will get back to you. And uh, if we're interested, we'll make arrangements, and uh, we'll go from there. Second, there is a Spanish language version of Soft White Underbelly, which is called Soft White Underbelly en Espanol. This is on YouTube. This is a new channel. Um, it's the most popular videos from my channel with my voice as well as the interviewee's voices uh, dubbed in Spanish. So for the Spanish speakers among you, th that channel is, uh, is on YouTube, Soft White Underbelly en Espanol. And third, there is a book coming out. Um, I've been working on this, obviously, through uh, all the portraits that you see in Southwide Underbelly are, are what I chose from, and I chose the, the best ones from that large group of, uh, of images. And this book will be coming out this fall, um, probably in November, in time for the holidays. Um, this is a collection of uh, all the best portraits. There's also a quote from each interview on the facing page, and then in the back of the book are some of my personal notes about some of these interviews and interviewees, like what, what was going on behind the scenes. So the book is $125, the signed copy is $150, and you can, you can pre-order it now at uh, softwhiteunderbelly.org. Now keep in mind that my previous three books, which all came out before Soft White Underbelly, are all sold out. They're all out of print, and it's very difficult to find copies of those books. So. I don't know exactly if, how that impacts this book, but if you want to reserve a copy now, you can pre-order, and I can guarantee you'll have it uh, before the holidays of this year. So softwhiteunderbelly.org is how you order it, and, um, and that's what's going on. Thank you for watching, and thank you for subscribing. See you tomorrow. All right, so <laughs> I have Noel, my assistant here, with me. Say hi, Noel. Hello, everybody. Um, and we were just thinking, well, it might be fun to let Noel ask some questions about what I do and how I do it and, and about the channel and about some of the people that I interview and, and whatever. And uh, we're going to take a stab at it, see how it goes. I think it's uh, interesting because a lot of your fans want to know a little bit more about you. And uh, I think it's uh, what we would really like to know is What's one of your favorite pieces of soft white underbelly that gets you up every morning? Hmm. Interesting. There are certain people, certain talks I've done that are just really, that really hit me harder than others. Like Alicia, the uh, black woman that was a crack addict down on Skid Row. She was great. She was like a, fr a friend of mine. Well, she was there. <clears throat> she moved to Houston. Hutch's, Hutch's talks are great. I love Hutch. His, his first talk was magnificent. There, there's so many. It's, it's hard to pinpoint anybody. There's so many that are great in different ways. Some of them are funny. Some of them are poignant. Some of them are just so tragic and sad. And some of them are in, motivational and inspiring. It's like, you know, I, I, what I love about this project is the variety. Like, like you never know what you're going to get. Like, you know, it's, I sit somebody down and sometimes it's like, whoa, this is so interesting. Or, or it's so sad or it's so, wow, I, you know, it's, it's a beautiful story. And it's like, it's a mixed bag of everything. And that's, that's what life is. And that's, that's why I enjoy this so much. But, the, but there's, a, there's a million people. Jerry, 
Rebecca, of course. Caroline. They go on and on. You know, the Whitakers, of course. So many people. They've become part of your family a little yeah. bit, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, they definitely <laughs> become part of your be, become part of your life for sure. Especially when I was going down to Skid Row all the time. I have another studio now in Santa Monica, where, where we are now. But I also have the studio on Skid Row for that kind of content. So I, I go back and forth. And the Skid Row thing, I was I was going there every day for four years, and that was that just got on. That beat me up after a while. It was very hard. But you got through it. I got through it. That's another question I think your fans would want to know is how do you get through some of the tough interviews? How do you take care of yourself? That's a good question. Um, you know, I exercise every day, hard every morning. That kind of helps clear away a lot of the clutter in your life. I sleep really well, I eat really well, I take care of myself. But that still doesn't negate all of the hustling and the bullshit and the, and the crap that I put up with from all these street hustlers, which I get a lot of. Like my phone is like unbelievable. It's like there are, there are days or evenings sometimes. There was, a, there was a day last week where I got like, you know, like so many phone calls from the girls on Figueroa Street who, I need a room for, you know, some tragedy is going on in their life and they, I, I need a room for this, I need a room for that. I need my, my you know, or, or when COVID was going on, everybody had COVID, my kids are gonna be alone and I need a room. It's like, I got two flat tires. Like everybody's got something going on that need money for it. Now, I'm not stupid. I know, I know that very often they just need money for crack or, or, <laughs> or crystal or, what, or whatever they need money for. Or they, they can't hit their quota for the day and they, their pimp is putting pressure on them. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I get hustled every which way. Um, but I, I, I think by taking care of my health, I, I am able to deal with... Another thing that's important, I think, is when I'm operating these two cameras, I'm, foc I'm, I'm a photographer, so I'm, I'm focused on the camera, the lighting, the audio levels now because I'm doing video, the, the, the noise outside, which on Skid Row is a huge problem. It used to be a worse problem on my earlier videos, but I've worked out some things to help with that. But there's so many things going on, and then my phone is going off, and so-and-so wants to be here at a certain time, and they only have, like, there's so much garbage that goes on. I don't know anybody that, that could do it. I can barely do it. It's a lot. Every day I drive home from Skid Row and I'm like, <laughs> I don't ever want to do this ever again. Your phone does light up quite quite a bit. Yeah. So it's good that you take care of yourself. Yeah. I think but, that but, that's... But, but then every once in a while when I'm down there, I strike gold. I find a diamond and it's like, oh my God, th this makes it all worth it. It makes it all worth it. It sure does. Yeah, you're, you're one in a million, a gazillion for sure. There's no question. Well, I, I, like, I like challenges. I, I, like, I like to create the impossible. Like I would love to see Rebecca or, or Amanda. <laughs> I'd like to see them get better. It's tough to... And that would require a miracle. But I believe in miracles. Yeah. I sure do. No, I live for them. Yep. And that's what, that's what kind of motiva motivates me to do this. Because if, if it's just like, oh, we're going to get Nancy clean from her crystal meth, and it's like, it's all going to be better. It's like, that bores, that, that doesn't really do it for me. But, but these, these impossible stories, you know, it's just, whether it's Rebecca or, or, I mean, so many people have died. I mean, I have a list of all the people that have died that I've interviewed. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's because of the lifestyle they're leading, leaving, leading or living um, that just lead, like, <laughs> like they're, they're, they're getting hit by cars. They're, they're over, overdosing. That's a real common one. They're just getting murdered. Like so much stuff. Like, like, and every, it seems like every day there's another one. It's heavy. Yeah. I've, I've done 7,000 interviews. So not every single one that you, that I, you, I, one out of five is how many you'll, you'll see. So that for every video you see on my channel, there's five that you've, you've not seen. So I know all of these people in one way or another. Man, the, the, the crap they go through, it's unbelievable. In your first intro, you explained a little bit about what the channel was representing then, which was three years ago, plus. And it's evolved a little bit like since four then. four and a half years. Yeah, so do you wanna explain how it's evolved? It took a bit of a turn. 
to opening and uh, opening your arms a, a lot. I don't know how in, you in would terms of like what, what I want to do with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, like Noah, Noah worked with me at my advertising studio. That was that was a, a decade or more ago, right? Wow, yeah. A long time ago. And uh, back then, I was always fascinated with this kind of stuff. And I got a studio down on Skid Row. I had one studio in, in L.A. in Culver City, and then and then I got this little studio, kind of like the one I have now, on Sixth Street downtown, and I would just do portraits there. And the, you know, one way, or, you know, eventually those portraits led to doing some interviews. The first one I did was with Caroline, and I did a bunch of others. And I realized, wow, you know, there's something there. I just don't know what to do with a video interview. But I, I recognized that there was something there, and then then I kind of put it down for a while and I, and I started up again and I put it down for a while and then and then uh, four, four and a half years ago is when I started Software Underbelly and really just got serious about it. And I recognize that all those people down, down there, downtown, down on Skid Row are fascinating people, fascinating stories. They're people just like you and me who, who've just had some terrible breaks, terrible luck, terrible whatever, things that they've been through and, it, and it's like it's heartbreaking to hear. And, and you know, I think a lot of what I do is also a reaction to what you see out in the, like in Hollywood or in TV. All, all these beautiful motivational stories that all end happily and everything's rosy and perfect. And I worked in advertising, so everything had to be perfect all the time. And you just get fed up with that because it's all fake. Because life is not perfect all the time. So I, I wanted to do something that was basically a reaction to all that fakery. That I, that I was doing in advertising for, for decades. How long did I do that? That was my whole life, basically, from, from as a late teenager, but, you know, early 20s until, until you know, for, for three, four decades I was doing that, it seems. So this is a reaction to that, where I just, I just want it to be as raw and real, and if it's ugly, it's ugly. And if it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And if it's funny, it's funny. And if it's sad, it's sad. And it is what it is. But I don't want to retouch it. I don't want to fake it. I don't want to adjust it or, or manipulate it in any way so it's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a happy story or it's an it's a inspirational story or it's, or it's a more fucked up story than it is. They're just what they are. And, and, and that's, that's really what I wanted to do initially with this. But as I spend a lot of time on Skid Row, I, I just get <laughs> fed up. I can't breathe anymore with so much of that dysfunction. There's that's where taking care of yourself really comes into play, I think, because then you can start again the next day with a fresh eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's, where, that's where exercise and sleep and diet and all that stuff helps and having good friends and all that. But, uh, but now as, as I grow, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very multi, multifaceted or whatever you want to say. I, I like stories like some of the ones we've been doing lately, which is like, you know, Jim Sexton, the, uh, the divorce attorney, that was a great example of the direction I'd like to go in, which aren't necessarily, oh, these tragic stories, they're just more interesting, that, that, are, that are kind of pertinent to what's, what we're all going through in our lives and our relationships. You know, that, that's, that's a really important video. I, I don't know that I agree 100% with everything Jim says, but it certainly is interesting to consider, that you know? And, 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 you know, there's, there's been a bunch, bunch of others. Uh, Billy, the horse jockey, Jerry Van Dyke, the Taliban kidnapping survivor, Merle Allen, Nils Jorgensen, the uh, New York City fireman, Jennifer, the cancer survivor. Those are the kind of videos I would, I'd love to do more of, along with what I've been doing all along. It's just, it's just amazing to me how many people have been through like abuse as kids. Can we talk about that for a second? I'd like to ask you, um, a lot of people ask us about they want to help. They want to say, I want to help people on your channel. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we like, get lots of that. Let's talk about that a little we, bit. We get the, no, no one goes through my emails. And how many of those do we get a, a week? I mean, thousands. Of. I mean, the people that want to help, I, no, I, get I it. respect you, you, it. You, you watch right. these videos. You see Rebecca. You clearly see what she needs or what he needs, Rebecca needs. We all agree on that. Nobody's saying Rebecca doesn't need rehab therapy, housing, all of that stuff. And, she, and she's been offered it. There, there was a team, yes, uh, like two days ago, offering Rebecca everything in the world. Basically, housing, rehab, therapy, just a whole long list of stuff that she needed. And I was trying to convince her, talking her into it. 
And she just, she just, just got up and left. If an addict wants to quit, no one can stop them. But if an addict doesn't want to quit, no one can make them. No, no matter what, what you want for an addict, you, you can't make them want it. If they don't want it themselves, it's not going to happen. But, but if they want it, nobody can get in their way. They're, they're going to do it. And Rebecca's just not ready right now. But I tell you what, Rebecca is one of the most fascinating people I've ever met. Sure Unbelievable. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people don't, don't see the genius. You guys have really gotten to know each other over the years, haven't you? It's been two or three years now with Rebecca? Yeah, it's like three years. I mean, we've, we've, uh, you know, it's, you know he, what people don't understand, I, I see the comments when I read them. Oh, just, just let him go. Just he's, go he's gone. Just let him, let him fade away and die. And, and you know, he, he seems to be almost wanting that. He, he OD'd on fentanyl last week, um, but he uh, recovered. Somebody gave him Narcan and he, he came to. But uh, I was on the phone when it happened. And uh, yeah, it's a scary call to get, isn't it? Mm-mm. I was sitting there listening, hoping that he's not dying. It was, it was crazy. But Rebecca is a, is a genius, unlike anybody I've ever seen before. But he, as, as, as genius as he is, the, that line between genius and crazy is very, very thin. And he's, he's over on the crazy side more often than he is on the genius side. And it's hard to, hard to deal with that. But you, you, know, you, you look back at your life. Remember when you were 26 years old? Party. Fuck. A lot, of, a lot of us did really stupid shit when we were 20, in our 20s. So you have to, you have to give them that. And, and the thing that's important is these people don't have friends. A lot of these people do not have friends. I can't tell you how many of the sex workers I've asked, like, do you have, do you have any friends? And they all go, no. They don't have any friends. So a lot of them don't have family. So imagine going through your life with no friends and no family. You've got, you've got nobody. All you've got is a bunch of guys that want to take advantage of you or, or people that just want to sell you drugs and they don't really care what's in the drug. They, they just want to make their money off you. Like you don't have anybody on your side. So that's why sometimes I'm maybe too kind to Rebecca. I'm being too nice. I'm enabling sometimes, but I know what the alternative is. The alternative is like, all right, so, you know, I'm done. You're, you're just going to, you, you want to self-destruct. I'm not going to help with that. I'm going to let you go. It's I, nice I, I don't to know show the somebody the nice side of life every once in a while. Yeah, Maybe I, to just, give just, a, just a to hint. know, just to know that somebody cares about you, I think is is super important. It's a big deal. So I'll, I'll be that person. I'm not giving him money every day. You know, I, I, you know, there was a long time where I'd see Rebecca three times a year. So how can I be so enabling if I see her three days a year, four days a year, maybe? You know, but now now she comes over more often. But but that that's sporadic, and then she'll go off to whatever other part of town, and she won't come back. She she isn't. Rebecca will be on Skid Row knowing that I'm right around the corner and she won't come to my studio to get money because she, she, she's, she's, she's not a hustler. She's not here to hustle me to get money for drugs. In fact, she will, she will resist doing that. But like yesterday, I gave her some money for some clothes and wigs and stuff like that. So that's what she wanted. So I gave her that. What she actually used it on, I don't know. But that's uh, sometimes my money does go towards drugs. I, <laughs> I'm not naive. I, I, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. But Rebecca is definitely somebody that I know you care a lot about. Yeah, but 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 I I don't do like this is not a helping channel. This channel is not about helping. If it was, you'd see a lot more videos about me helping. There's a lot of shit that I do behind the scenes that nobody ever sees because it's not a helping channel. It's, I'm just trying to create awareness of what is going on in our in our country. Um, and you and. And these videos open up, I think, a lot of people's eyes to what's really going on and how these things, how these stories came about, what kind of childhoods these people had, wh how they, what, their, what their life is like, what their self-worth is like, their self-esteem, which is like the number one. Mental health is the number one thing. It's a mental health channel. It's not a drug channel, you know. Um, if, if I were to ask you what you would suggest to any one of these emails that we get where they say, how can I help? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. The... You name what state, what city you're in in the United States. If you're watching, name the person on my channel. Let's say Caroline. Oh, my God, let's help Caroline. I guarantee you there's a Caroline right in Roanoke, Virginia, or in 
Tallahassee, Florida, or in Houston, Texas, or in San Francisco, or Seattle, or Minnesota, or anywhere. Right. They, 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 they've got Carolines and Rebecca's and Amanda's and all these people everywhere you go. You don't need to take care of this Caroline because there's a Caroline right in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee for you. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. And you know, a, little, that, a little goes a long way. Sometimes just saying, I, I think do you need help? It's kind of like a TV show. You, people, people get attached to that person because they've seen them. They've gotten to know them. But th th this is not a, I'm not, I'm not trying to create a TV show where we're doing follow-ups on people because I could, I could easily do that. I, tr I try to resist doing that. Um, you know, because, you know, people, like I get, I see the comments sometimes, oh, you're just exploiting these people. Look, every single person that comes to me, the first thing I say to them, I just want to talk you out of doing this interview. And here's why. Your grandmother, your parents, your, your kids, your lawyers, the court, um, everybody is going to see this your future employer, everybody's going to see this video because my channel is big now. You, you, you don't want to do this video unless you really want to do it and then I'll, I'll pay you whatever I'm paying you. Um, but I talk them out of it. So once they hear that, and if they still want to do it, then, then, I, then we do it. But I'm not like sitting there like trying to manipulate them or figure out how to get them to do an interview when they really don't want to. That's, that's not what I do. And th I've never been that type of person. So I've never operated that way. So if that's exploiting, then, it's, then that's exploiting. And, and there's, a, there's a certain exploitive nature to what I'm doing, for sure. But, but uh, this is not about, to me, what I'm doing is not about the person I'm interviewing as much as it's about our society as a whole. And, and if we're going to fix anything, we better figure out what's going on. And the way to do that is to put Caroline or Amanda or whoever on camera so you can see what's going on and why and what kind of childhood they had and what happened and what they went through and why their mental health is way, the way it is so that we can learn and maybe fix it for our own kids in the future. That's, th that's what I'm doing. So w once in a while, I'm nice to these people and I help some of them. I'll, I'll get somebody a room or I'll get somebody whatever they need, clothing, wigs, you know, phones, whatever. Yeah. You know, Uber ride to their uh, court thing or whatever. You know, so I, I do that kind of stuff all the time. But that's not what the channel's about. That's just what I'm about, personally. But my personal life is not part of this channel. You know, so that's why you don't see me on camera, except for now. <laughs> <laughs> what else would I think that people might want to know? Do you want to, do you want to share that the project has a bit of an homage to somebody? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No, there, there's, there's a, we, we all have a, a life and a history and, a, and whatever, and she knows who she is, and that's, that's, that's what it was. And that's great. And it's, it's like, but, you know, it's like, I'm not here to talk about that. Noel Noel's all, no, knows, Noel knows everything about my personal life. More than anybody, right? A bit. <laughs> yes. Do you, uh, but you came from a good childhood, yeah? Do I came from a great childhood. You did have a good childhood. Great. Yeah. So this is not about me. Like, I, I have no history with drugs. I have no history with child abuse or anything like that. My, my dad was hard on us, but, but he loved us. My parents were married until the day my mom died a few years ago. <clears throat> and... Uh, my mom loved me like, like you couldn't have loved a kid better than she did, me. And my dad, my dad was great. Not necessarily perfect, but you, if you consider, so I think it's really important to consider, like whenever you, somebody does something, somebody does something crappy to you in traffic or is rude to you or whatever, rather than just get pissed at them, you, I think it's really, really helpful and important to understand there's a reason they are behaving the way they are. Something that happened to them or something that they went through as a child or, or, or something, something that somebody did to them at some point. So my, my dad came from, from crap, crap parents, just the worst. The worst you can imagine is what my dad came from. And my dad was an off, awesome dude. He still is. He's 94 years old. My dad's great. And uh, that's, that's, that's amazing when you see those kind of stories where somebody comes from crap and they become stand-up citizens and, and do the right thing. It's beautiful. And have kids that they're proud of too. Yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. No, but, but, but that's what 
having good parents does because you, you want. I remember having a strong desire as a kid, and I still do, to make my parents proud. Like, I didn't want to become a fuck-up where my, my mom would be like, God, you're really dropping the ball. You really are dropping, the, you're really fucking up. I wanted her to be like, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. Like, I was motivated to, to, to do things in my life that would create that result. And that's what good parenting does. But you, what was I going to say on this? Um, I, th I think it's important to, like, if you're a parent, like, uh, like with my mom, I could have been, I could have been basically Rebecca. I could have been, I could have been gay. I could have been in prison. I could have been a sex worker. I could have been a drug addict. I could have, I could have been, check all the boxes. My mom still would have loved me exactly the way she did. And I knew that. Even when I f would fuck up, she would still love me the exact same way. And because I felt love that way, it makes you want to honor that. And I, I think that's what's really broken. With, with our country, is like, people don't parent the way I was parented. So then the kids end up messing things up in their own lives, becoming self-destructive, and that leads to drugs and all these other problems you see. And, uh, and avoidance, so to say. Yeah, 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 but, but that escapism, the, 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 the mental health thing is, is, is everything. But there's help out there. Yeah, but, but like, to, to me, I, I, I see the result of what I'm doing with Soft White Underbelly. Not, I, I suspect we won't see the result of what I'm doing, maybe, if the channel grows enough, maybe another 10, 20 years. Not this year, <laughs> because the, nothing's changing right now. Maybe, maybe you'll see it in the, in the result of the kids that are being parented better. Because I've seen a lot of comments where people say, oh my God, you, you've taught me how to be a, what not to do as a parent. Those are some of my favorite comments that they're learning. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the viewers on my channel, I mean, I, I, I think I, I realize how, I think, I don't know what percent, but it's like, I would say there's maybe, how many? Maybe 10,000, maybe 20,000 of my viewers that really get what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing things for my audience, I'm doing things that I find interesting, but I think there's, there's a small number of my audience that really understands, sees, sees things the way I do. Because some of the people are just watching, the, they only watch the hot girl videos mm -hmm. or, or the really fucked up drug addiction train wreck stories or the sex workers or, or the whatever, you know, it's like people, people are watching it for entertainment purposes. And that's just the nature of social media and human nature. But, but I think there's a, there's a part of my audience that really understands what I'm trying to do. And if I can impact some part of society somehow, make somebody a better parent, then, then it's all worth it. That's so cool. I have one more question that mm -hmm. I thought would be really interesting for the viewers, which would be to talk a little bit about the Whitakers, mm -hmm. if you're okay with that. Sure. Because you met the Whitakers early on as well when you were doing portraits, and your relationship has grown considerably with this family yeah. over the years. It's changed a lot. They, they jump up to give you hugs. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy now. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Even Lorraine did that last time. So beautiful, and they truly enjoy the time that you guys spend together. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's another story, kind of like what I said about Rebecca earlier. These people didn't have anybody. They didn't have anybody outside their own immediate family, their own brothers and sisters that cared, gave a shit about them. Most of what they got was hate. People, people driving by and throwing eggs at their house or stuff like that. That's all they got. And people making fun of them or whatever. So here comes along somebody who, yes, there's an exploitive nature to what I'm doing. I'm not saying there isn't, but out of that exploitive nature, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, the white-tailed deer and, and the mallard duck in the United States. Those, those two animals would probably be extinct right now if it wasn't for the duck, Ducks Unlimited, the duck hunters, and the, and the hunters that, that like to breed and hunt <laughs> white-tailed deer. So it's like there's a negative aspect to everything and there's a positive aspect to it. So the negative aspect to what I'm doing with the Whitakers is I'm exploiting their their story and their life. The positive aspect is they, they now feel loved by almost, it seems like the whole country, the whole world. 
Everywhere they go, they get love from everybody. They've never experienced that. And then through the GoFundMes, they're, they're, they're getting uh, financial support, which is really nice. They love that. And, and they get these people like me and Lauren, we come visit, and, and they just love seeing us, and they're, they're happy and smiley, and we have a great time every time we, we get together. The and they, of they, life they trust good. me, and I, I take care of them, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful relationship now, you know. I, w- I wish I'd start. I mean, so many things you wish, you know, in hindsight, you wish you'd done differently. I wish I had started this 10, 20 years ago, which I actually did, but I just didn't take the ball and run with it. So there's a chance that the community could really come together and we could all be a part of this, which is what the GoFundMe is about. Oh, yeah, with our house? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not doing particularly as w- it didn't, didn't start off as strongly as I had hoped, but maybe in time it will. Right. Maybe that maybe the house that they're aiming at is not the house. Maybe we'll just build right. a double wide on their on their own property and do something that's we'll a little look bit into less. Some alternative. Yeah, there, there's probably a, a less expensive. But but I'll do some more videos and maybe we'll get another jump and we'll figure it out. And and maybe if the book sells really well, maybe I'll take some of that money and put it towards you know because I use a lot of my own money to to help people out. Whether it, whether it's getting somebody an apartment, a room, a car, or whatever, I've done that a lot and. Uh, I use my own money for that. So whether it, you know, let's say the book does really well, I'd easily give that money to the Whitakers and let them buy a house if they weren't if their GoFundMe wasn't quite there, or or Rebecca's rehab, or or whoever's apartment or whatever. You know, so that, that's I do that kind of stuff a lot, which is not what the channel's about. <laughs> I don't want to make it about me right. and and how nice I am because it's like there, there's other YouTube channels doing that kind of stuff. I don't do that. Is that good? That's great. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Noel. Yeah. That was fun. Maybe we'll do it again one day. The world wants to know about Mark.